Hi everyone, Matt Burney or Dan Illman taking a look back at the Grade 1 Canadian International from Woodbine on Sunday afternoon. And we, again, we've talked about it with all these videos. You need to go back and take a look and just kind of, little caveat, little asterisk, complete deluge of rain that came through. Without question, the most stunning victory of the weekend. No doubt about it, the most stunning. And there was a 40 to 1 shot that won the New York ticket. Well, that was stunning. You and I have always been big fans of Bullard's Alley. Mm -hmm. He hadn't won a race in a long, long time. We were beginning to wonder if he ever had it in him. He had it in him over this ground. Well, let's, let's see how the whole thing goes. They break from the gate in the Canadian International. And you're going to notice that, okay, the fractions again. We've got to take those with a little bit of a grain of salt considering they're running over a complete bog. The opening quarter is going to go in 26 and 2 there is Messi. Now, Messi is a horse that generally is not that forwardly placed, but I think that was just more a product of nobody's going to go. Let's try to go on with it. You're going to see Johnny Bear not far off of it, but really the horse to keep an eye on is Bullard's Alley. He's the number seven. He's sitting about three or four lengths off the pace in the two or three path. Enrico Rosa da Silva just has this horse in a perfect spot, and he seems to be enjoying the ground uh, all the way around. Messi get to, got to the front, and I can understand what Jose Ortiz was thinking, simply because in his last two races, Messi was trying to come from behind and got into all sorts of traffic trouble. I think here the plan was twofold. One, for Messi to go to the lead and get away from traffic. Two, perhaps to set at least an honest pace for his uncoupled new stablemate, the defending champion, and they, uh, not enable, erupt. Erupt is going to be coming from sort of the back of the pack at this point. Meanwhile, you've got mid-pack, a horse like Oscar nominated, who we know he's as honest as they come. His most recent victory down at Kentucky Downs figured to have him fit and ready to go for a spot like this. And you've got some other horses in here that we know what they're capable of. Enterprising's an honest horse in this spot. Idaho coming over for Aiden O'Brien back of the pack flamboyant coming in from california but again right now everything looks like this is going to be just your run of the mill and i say run of the mill i don't mean that in a negative light it's going to be a nice turf race and then before you know it uh, chaos ensues because someone blows this thing wide open. Chaos is going to begin right around here when Eureka Rosa de Silva decides to move three wide with the number seven Bullard's Alley into the shock of just about everybody. He takes over the lead before they swing into the stretch and he's got everybody else off the bridle. You got Johnny Bear sitting in behind. Johnny Bear won the Northern Dancer. He gets this kind of trip every time. I just don't think the ground really worked to his advantage here. Flamboyant, the number two in behind Johnny Bear. This is a Southern California import. He He's not used to this kind of ground. The fact that he runs third is okay, but just look at Bullard's Alley. And we know Bullard's Alley. He's a fighter. He's an honest horse. He's not supposed to be taking over a grade one race at a mile and a half and then just absolutely annihilating a field. Not only does he finish, he blows the doors off this field. He's the only horse that comes home sub 24 seconds, which is crazy to think over this turf course. I mean, at the top of the lane, Julian Leperu on Oscar nominated, riding him beautifully, looked like he was ready to go. And next thing you know, he loses by almost 11 lengths. He gave uh, Oscar nominated a perfect ride because he was just following the cover of Bullard's Alley and he expected just to be towed into the race and probably right off this horse's flank when they swung into the stretch and in the blink of an eye, Bullard's Alley was gone to the tune of an $87.90 mutual. It's just a race where <clears throat> Bullard's Alley's always been a nice horse. We've always been a big fan. His trainer, Tim Gleishaw, has had the two weeks of his career right now, Bucaro, the turf spreader, yeah. and then on the other end of the spectrum, the 12 furlong grade one Canadian International with Bullard's Alley, but it's just hard to, to trust the results of this race, let's say, if Bullard's Alley decides to run back in a race like the Breeders' Cup Turf. And when you look at the fig, a lot of people are going to trust it. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, not only does Bullard's Alley pay $87.90, but, but more importantly, have you ever seen a horse pay that much in a stakes race but also win by the length of the stretch. You don't see it too often. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I mean, he, he dominated this field. And as you see, Eureka Rosa da Silva, <laughs> he might not have been expecting it. He's jubilant. It's the easiest uh, $800,000 purse he ever won. And he did it on a 42 to one shot. A 42 to one shot that earned a 114 buyer wow. speed figure. Now here's uh, the thing, we talked about it. You see the connections, uh, congrats to everyone involved. Um, let's keep in mind, Bullard's Alley is a low 90 type of horse. Right. And he earned a 114. And guess what? I actually, when I first saw the numbers come out, and I said, I mean, he couldn't possibly have run that fast. He, I think he earned the 114. I just don't know where the heck it came from. I don't know. Well, it came from the, the turf. Ground. It had to that, be. That, I mean, that, that's, that's all it was. That's it had to be. It's hard to imagine that a five-year-old like Bullard's <clears throat> Alley has run a zillion times. This was start number 35. All of a sudden, the light bulb switched on. He's the best turf. 
country. He ran a 114. I'm assuming the Oscar nominated, the Flamboyants, the Idahos, they ran their usual yeah. race, which is why when Andy and company looked at that 114, he's like, it, it makes sense. It's just that when you're handicapping, and it, it's possible this horse shows up on the Breeders' Cup turf, find the outlier and say it's highly unlikely he's going to run that race on a firm turf course against better horses. He's the kind of horse, when you just look at the overall body of record, or body of work, I should say, people are going to realize that this thing sticks out like a sore thumb. And I, again, I can't overstate it. I believe he earned it here. Yes. But I just know Bullard's Alley. That's not Bullard's Alley. And let's say the high tide comes soon at Del Mar, and the turf course is just completely flooded. He's going to get his mile and a half that he wants, and he's going to get his soft turf. That's a lot of ifs. And even then, what, uh, what price do you and want him against world class co competition? Against world class competition. It's listen. He's a really nice. Cool you and I have horse. loved him. We've loved him for a long time. But but if you're going to take that 114 buyer at face value, uh, oof, I mean, I, I I I just can't do it in the Breeders' Cup. I can't. Nominated sounds like he is on to the the uh, Breeders' Cup turf off of this. Race. Problem with that, I think it makes all the sense in the world. He earned a 99 buyer in here. Flamboyant also earns a 99 buyer, and that goes to what you were talking about with Andy and the buyer associates. These horses ran their race. It's just Bullard's Alley ran off the screen. They ran their race, and Oscar nominated has been much improved. I think he likes a little bit of giving the ground. He won a Kentucky Downs two starts back, but that was the confidence booster. You know, Michael Maker, we always talk about a fantastic trainer, is he knows where to place his horses. And this horse is going to fire really no matter the distance. It's just that when you throw him in against top, top horses, it didn't work out. Here, he just happened to catch Bullard's Alley, who I guess is a top, top horse yeah. on a soft ground. <clears throat> I don't see anything changing in the Breeders' Cup turf, but I would expect a good, solid effort. As for Flamboyant, he might be kind of the sneaky horse. Although, you know something? I'm not sure a mile and a half is really what he wants. Yeah, I don't know about the Breeders' Cup, but he ran much better than we had seen anyway in 2017. Uh, the other horse we need to just briefly touch on is, is Idaho. Idaho, let, let's make it clear, he is not his older brother that everyone wanted him to be. He's a nice horse. He's not Highland Real. He's not Highland Real. There's no doubt about it. I'm not sure he's this bad. He didn't break. So it was a completely different situation than the sword dancer where he was dueling on the lead. He didn't break. He was versus. I was disappointed that he couldn't out finish Oscar nominated and flamboyant for second and third respectively. He was just sort of flat in the stretch. A lot of traveling for the source. They sent him over here for the sword dancer. He threw a fit. Sent him back in the arc. He was basically the pace setter. Yep. Sent him back here. Catches a soft turf course. He's just a notch below the top European, uh, you know, Group One horses. He ran fine, but you know, you expect a lot more. He was supposed to like this ground. You know, sometimes in racing, you just kind of throw your hands up and you go. Uh, <laughs> well, they're, 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 what, what are you going to do? Because you know, what you do is you say Tim Gleishow is a really good horseman. Absolutely, he doesn't get the respect he deserves. He's persevered with Bullard's Alley in some really tough races, and you know something, golf clap. And even if you bet on someone else and you lost and you were trying to find yeah. out a way, it, it, just let it be. It is what it is. It. You win some, you lose some. Uh, Bullard's Alley, well done. 114 buyer speed figure. And like you say, Tim Glashaw, fantastic week for him. Winning down there at Keeneland in a graded stakes race last weekend. And then he comes back here north of the border, winning the Canadian International with Bullard's Alley with a 114 buyer speed figure.